In today's video, we are going to learn about the three major battles of the Civil War that took place in 1863 and how the war turned during this crucial year. So let's get started. 1863 at a glance. We're going to talk about the Battle of Chancellorsville, West Virginia becoming a new state, the Battle of Gettysburg, and the Battle of Vicksburg. Let's begin the Battle of Chancellorsville. The Battle of Chancellorsville took place in the state of Virginia in May of 1863. It was a huge Confederate victory, which may surprise you because look at how outnumbered the Confederate troops are compared with the Union soldiers involved, 97,000 to 57,000. The Union general in this battle was General Joseph Hooker, who we have seen before. Abraham Lincoln put him in charge of the Union army after he fired Burnside. The Confederate general in this battle was, of course, Robert E. Lee. Chancellorsville is actually considered Lee's greatest battle. He worked alongside his right-hand man, Stonewall Jackson, to split his army into two parts to surround the Union forces. This clever maneuver outsmarted Hooker and his troops, making them think that, they were, that there were more of them than there actually were. You can see from the battle map here how this worked. So you can see Lee's troops here on one side and how they surround the Union on the back side as well. Here's a real photograph from the Union camp during the Battle of Chancellorsville. Something sad happened though during this battle. Even though it was a huge success for Lee's army and known as Lee's greatest battle, Stonewall Jackson was shot in the arm by his own men on accident and died because of infection. Confederates saw him riding near the camp and thought he was a Union spy and before they recognized Jackson it was too late. Stonewall Jackson did not die immediately, but died from pneumonia caused by infection because his arm was amputated. Oddly enough, you can find Jackson's arm buried in a separate spot from his grave, which you can vis go visit today. When Lee heard the news, um, he was greatly moved because Jackson had been such an important part of the Confederate leadership commenting about Jackson losing his arm because of amputation. Um, Lee actually says that he has lost his left arm, but I have lost my right arm because of his friend and his comrade. On June 20th, 1863, West Virginia becomes a new state. You see, poor farmers in the West did not own slaves, and most were actually against slavery. The farmers out West did not agree with Virginia's decision to secede from the Union in 1861, so the, the Western counties joined together and petitioned Washington, D.C. to let them form their own state called West Virginia to be part of the United States once more and support the Union cause against slavery. And in June, the federal government added West Virginia as a Union state. Now let's go ahead and talk about the Battle of Gettysburg. The Battle of Gettysburg took place in the state of Pennsylvania. After the Confederate victory at Chancellorsville, Lee and his army were feeling pretty confident and decided to invade the North. They marched up through Virginia, Maryland, and into Pennsylvania, setting up camp near the town of Gettysburg. The massive Confederate army planned a huge attack on the Union troops there, who were at first fewer in number. On the second day of the battle, though, many more Union troops joined those stationed in Gettysburg and fought back against the Confederates. Many, many lives, as you can see, were lost on both sides during this battle. General Meade led the Union forces against Robert E. Lee of the Confederates, and Meade finally won the entire battle. This battle lasted over three days. It was the bloodiest battle of the Civil War. Day one included the Confederates outnumbering the Union and forced the Union to retreat in the beginning. Lee had wanted his men to continue the attack and finish off the Union troops, but his men delayed and the Union had the opportunity to dig into the town and set up their defenses. 
Then on day two, which is July 2nd, more Union troops arrived. And this is the turning point here from both sides. And they were now at full force. We had fighting on two areas, Big Round Top and Little Round Top, which are both hills near the town of Gettysburg. Lee attacked and there was fierce fighting on the second day. Throughout this day, um, both sides took heavy losses. The Union troops, though, held their lines and did not fall back, so they remained strong. And you can see how these different groups interacted with one another during this day. Now, Gettysburg is known as the turning point of the Civil War. And on the third day, General Robert E. Lee's last attempt was to break the Union line, and it ended in a disastrous failure, bringing the most decisive battle of the American Civil War to an end. And it ends with Pickett's Charge. On July 3rd, Lee had failed on the right and the left, and so he planned an assault on Meade's center. It was a 15,000-man strong column under a general named George Pickett, who was from Virginia. And he had organized his men. Lee ordered a massive bombardment of the Union positions, and they fired cannons for several hours before the charge. Around 3 p.m., Pickett leads his force into no man's land and finds that Lee's bombardment had failed. As Pickett's force attempts to cross the mile distance to Cemetery Ridge, they are being slaughtered constantly by Union forces. Um, let's see, only a few hundred Virginians end up reaching the Union line, and they are either captured or killed or uh, wounded severely. This was the last major offensive attack the Confederates tried before retreating and thus surrendering to the Union. The Union Army wins the Battle of Gettysburg, and this is a major thing. That's why Gettysburg is known as the turning point of the Civil War. From here on out, the Union start winning more and more battles than they lose, and the Confederates get weaker and weaker. The last battle of 1863 that we're going to talk about is the Battle of Vicksburg. Now, it's happening at about the same time that Gettysburg is happening, but it's out in the west and in the southwest in Mississippi. So the Union had another part of its army in the southwest fighting another major battle. It was headed up by Ulysses S. Grant. The Union troops were fighting for control of the Mississippi River. The Battle of Vicksburg, Mississippi, also called the Siege of Vicksburg, was basically a culmination of a long land and naval campaign by Union forces to capture a strategic position along this river, which was a really big deal for the Union. You see, rivers were a way of transporting military weapons, food, and soldiers into the South for fighting battles. And if the Union controlled the river and did not let the Confederates use it, this would make the Confederates weaker. Grant's troops fought the Confederate troops under Pemberton. It took about a month of fighting at various places along the river, but um, finally the Union troops do win, and that is why it's called a siege, because it takes many, many days and several little skirmishes during this battle to actually capture and control the river. And you can see um, some of the Navy there also fighting in conjunction with some land fighting. So Grant eventually is successful, marking another huge victory for the Union. A huge victory. So we're going to end with that, that the Union has victory and the Mississippi River is now under the control of the Union and the North, and this is going to significantly affect the outcome of the Civil War.